Many people in our world today wonder whether the New Testament Gospels uh, are historically reliable. In this brief talk, I want to raise and address five points very briefly as a kind of a teaser uh, for uh, the claim that uh, they can be trusted. The first question that we have to ask is, did the authors of those four Gospels want to record reliable history? We can answer that affirmatively because Luke's first four verses uh, are written in a very similar style to what we find in the prefaces and opening paragraphs of other ancient histories, whether it be Josephus' late first century Jewish history or uh, pre-Christian Greek writers like Herodotus or Thucydides. It doesn't, of course, mean that uh, everything Luke did was successful, but it gives us a clue as to his intentions. So that leads to a second question. Were the gospel writers able? Were they in a position to preserve reliable history? Even the most conservative dates for the earliest gospel, probably Mark, uh, are no earlier than the late 50s or early 60s of the first century. But this was an age of an oral culture when school children memorized large uh, epic narratives, Homer's Iliad or the Odyssey, in Jewish circles, a large part of the Hebrew scriptures, and even the longest of the Gospels, the Gospel of Luke, not quite 20,000 words, uh, is comparatively short uh, related to the types of things that ancient uh, people could memorize. But then thirdly, did they actually succeed in doing so? This is a, a question that's almost impossible to answer in uh, a brief few thoughts, other than to say, that one of the keys to understanding that they did is to judge them by first century standards. We often impose modern scientific levels of precision on ancient sources that uh, those people could never have imagined would someday be invented. As just one illustration, the quotation mark had yet to be invented in any of the ancient languages of the biblical cultures, nor was there any felt need for it. So we have to remember when we read the Gospels, whether it's Jesus or some other character being quoted, that uh, first of all, this is a translation in most cases from Aramaic that they would have spoken into Greek, and secondly, that the writers felt free to put things completely in their own words as long as they were being faithful to the gist of what was said. But fourthly, we have to ask, once the Gospels were written, were they reliably preserved? We have over 5,700 ancient Greek manuscripts uh, of part or all of the New Testament from before the invention of the printing press. We have a couple hundred from the earliest centuries of the Christian era alone. And the amount of differences uh, among the manuscripts are, compared to any other ancient documents that we have, uh, quite negligible. The really interesting differences are printed in footnotes uh, or marginal references in modern English translations of the Bible, and modern readers can see them. It's sometimes been said that there may be uh, several hundred thousand variants, but those are spread over thousands of manuscripts and the vast majority just affect spelling. But finally, what about the plethora of modern translations? We have uh, highly literal translations. We have very free, what are called dynamically equivalent translations. Probably the best kind is what has been called optimally equivalent that, uh, like the NIV, for example, aims in each passage to be as faithful to the original meaning and as clear and intelligible as possible at the same time. In some passages, one of those has to take a little preference over the other. But all a person needs to do is get a computer program or a selection of hard copies 
of a dozen or so of the major modern translations and randomly pick a text, and you will see how really similar they all are.